how big of a problem is cow docking in the country? A decade ago, USDA did a survey in which they found that nearly half of US dairy operations practice tail docking. A CSU study done a few years after that found that 82.3% of the dairies they surveyed were indeed tail docking as well. This isn't, just a, this isn't just a practice of a few bad actors. This is a relatively common practice throughout the dairy industry. But the science is overwhelming on this issue. This isn't an issue where you have some animal groups who are saying, hey, we don't think this is a good idea, and then you have the scientists coming and saying, oh, actually, this is a good practice. Indeed, if you look at University of Wisconsin's Ag Extension Service Center, they might know a little thing or two about dairy production. They say, contrary to popular opinion, there does not appear to be any influence of tail docking on cleanliness of butters, and there's no relationship between tail docking and milk quality. The National Milk Producers Federation themselves says that tail docking of dairy calves is not recommended. Scientific literature does not support anecdotal reports of the benefits of tail docking. The ABMA opposes routine tail docking of cattle, saying that it can lead to, that it provides no benefit for the animal, and that it can lead to distress during fly seasons. None other than Tom Quaif, the editor of Dairy Herd Management, says that the cumulative body of research on tail docking speaks loudly, benefits do not exist, the dairy industry should eliminate the routine practice of docking tails. This is an issue where the science is overwhelming and yet the industry continues to support and engage in this practice too often. Fortunately, to their credit, the California Farm Bureau endorsed a phase out of this. In Ohio, we've seen the Livestock Care Standards Board just pass a regulation phasing out dairy cow, dairy cow tail docking. But really, other issues should be similarly easy to find these types of agreements on. We shouldn't have much of a dispute as to whether it's acceptable to lock pigs, 500-pound social intelligent animals, inside of gestation crates that are two foot wide for their entire lives where they're unable even to turn around for their whole lives. We, shouldn't know, we should no longer have a debate about barren, unenriched battery cases where these birds can barely move their whole lives and have a difficult time even just extending their wings, and they can't do it without bumping into one another. None other than Bernie Rowland himself, the guy who literally wrote the book, Farm Animal Welfare, has this to say on those two types of practices. He said, research has confirmed what common sense already knew. Animals built to move must move. The customers of the meat, dairy, and egg industries have that common sense. They don't need to see the science indicating that tail docking or confining animals in tiny crates where they can't move their whole lives is inhumane. They know it to be inhumane. And the problem, of course, is that these practices are so extreme, they're so inhumane that they are just simply out of step with mainstream American values about how animals ought to be treated. David Fraser from uh, University of British Columbia says that animal producers will never convince the public that they care about their animals if they house them in skulls where they can't turn around for months. I mean, this isn't rocket science, it is common sense. An industry defending a practice that no, very few Americans will ever agree is an acceptable way to treat an animal is just not a good strategy. We're not seeing the pigs flying yet, but what we are seeing is a really important agreement between the United Egg Producers and the Humane Society of the United States to help move the ball forward when it comes to animal welfare in the egg industry. This would set a precedent that farm animal welfare can indeed be cooperative, that we can see various interest groups come together, sit down at the table, and say, you know what, there are some things on which we're going to agree to disagree, but here's what we can agree on, and we're going to move forward on it, rather than having a confrontational method where we're just throwing our grenades over the moat at one another over and over and over again. This act would amend the Egg Products Inspection Act. It would affect the pork industry in no way. It would affect the beef industry in no way. 